Hello, this is Haku with the Bean, and today we are going over SCP-004 and maybe SCP-5 and 6. But first we are going to start with SCP-004, the 12 rusty keys and the door. Item number SCP-004 Object Class Euclid Special Containment Procedures When handling items SCP-0042 through SCP-0013, proper procedure is vital. These items are not permitted to be moved off-site unless accompanied by two Level 4 security personnel. Under no circumstances should any other component of SCP-004 be taken through SCP-0041. The effects of doing so are as yet unknown, and the current cost of irritation makes further research impractical. Should any of the objects contained within SCP-0041 reach containment or the facility be breached, the keys must be brought inside and the door closed prior to the activation of Site-62's on-site forehead. Unauthorized removal of keys from the testing area is grounds for immediate termination. Level 1 unclearance is required for basic access to SCP-0041. Level 4 Clearance is required for use of SCP-0042-13. Description SCP-004 consists of an old wooden barn and door, SCP-0041, and a set of 12 keys, of 12 rusted steel keys, SCP-0042 through SCP-0013. The door itself is the entrance to an abandoned factory in Data Expunged. <sighs> On July 2nd, 1949, I'm assuming this is American dating systems. A group of three juveniles trespassing on federal property here, blank, find the door. According to their testimony, they found a, rest, a set of rusted keys in an iron lockbox and determined what door the keys must unlock. The juveniles are taken into custody after they contact Sheriff Unknown when one of their friends, SCP-004 or S01, goes missing. July 3rd, 1949. Local authorities find the severed right hand of SCP-004 or CAS-01, 8 kilometers from SCP-004-1. Other parts of SCP-004 or CAS-01's body are found scattered as far as 32 kilometers from the factory. Under interrogation, the apprehended juveniles tell authorities that upon opening the door with one of the keys, SCP-004 CAS-01 was torn into several pieces, each of which disappeared. At this point, the SCP Foundation takes over the investigation. July 4th, 1949. SCP Agent Blank obtains the keys from the local authorities to begin testing. Tests show that SCP-0042 through SCP-0413 all fit into a single lock on the large barred door. 12 D-Class personnel are assigned to test the effects of the door. One of the 12 subjects, each trying a different key to enter the room. Only two survive. Opening the door with any key except SCP-0047 or SCP-0042 causes the test subjects to be torn apart in multiple directions. However, no dismembered parts were found until later. 
At the time of writing, only two parts of each subject has it, have been recovered, with the exception of the subject using SCP-004 or unknown, whose pieces were scattered in close proximity. The others have, for all intents and purposes, vanished from existence. Of the two remaining subjects, only one, having used SCP-0047, returned unharmed. The other came back in a near-catatonic state, able only to remove himself from the room and then collapsed on the floor, and had to be restrained to prevent him from gouging out his eyes. See Appendix A, Mental Health History of SCP-004. The subject using SCP-0047 said that he entered a large room, impossibly big for the size of, of the attached building. After his exit, SCP-0041 was propped open and an army squad of level 3 personnel entered the size of the room. The size of the room is impossible to measure, and the door frame and the individuals in the room are, only, are the only part of the, the room that can be felt or illuminated. July 16th, 1949. Juven the juveniles of subjects and Sheriff Blank are terminated. I'm guessing I didn't have amnestics back then. Very tragic. August 2nd, 1949. Blank is declared a hazardous area due to unexploded ordnance. And fence is erected in order to prevent civilian and ingress. Tests to determine safety exposure to environment behind SCP-0041 begin. December 1st, 1950. That's a huge time skip. Space time anomalies resulting from exposure to SCP 004 are confirmed. Testing is suspended until further notice. July 2nd, 19 unknown. The unaccounted for remains of SCP 004. 004 cast one appear unexpectedly outside SCP-0041 despite being killed decades before. The remains of SCP-004 or Castle 1 are not decomposed in any manner and are still warm to detach. Blood remains uncoagulated. The remains are, are remanded for testing. July 4th, 19 unknown. The unaccounted for remains of one of the 12 original test subjects appear in similar manner to those of SCP-004 CASA-1. Rents have been indexated SCP-004 CASA-02. Records suggest that both, both SCP-004 CASA-1 and CASA-02 use SCP-004 unknown. That's a huge time skip. March 21st, 1999. With the massive F proliferation of nuclear weapons in World War III only blank years away, construction has begun on, si on a site inside SCP-0041, besides its stock supply for blank person days. April 21st, 1999. Blank has ordered or decided inside SCP-0041 to expand it to include an emerging the storage for all SCP unknown specimens and a blank ink petabyte database for the storage of all SCP data. The facility is now referred to as Site 62. September 25th, 2000. Oh, hey. That was three months old. Anyway, since Site 62 is operational, labs and containment units are complete and can cut contain the most dangerous specimen, and backup of the SCP database has begun. January 25th, 2001 Due to time anomalies, see space time anomalies below, all personnel working at Site-62 are now required to resign on-site permanently. The only personnel are to be informed that loved ones perish in an industrial accident. Cloned bodies have been prepared for funeral. August 14th, 2003. Massive power are out across northeastern United States and through Canada. Due to the 
initial failure of multiple SCP generators, Site-62 was without power for 53 minutes. During those 53 minutes, those on site were completely without any source of light. They reported sensing creatures and people, although no normal entities could be seen in or felt. Selected facility personnel were allowed to read blank, thanks A, and said the creatures sensed were of humanoid size, but otherwise similar to the massive green creature described. Space-time anomalies. SCP-004 seems to propagate its spatial temporal anomalies. Personnel leaving the building report losing time. Those who have been inside for weeks it says they had only been in this facility for several days, and records of work complete in supplies consumed during support their claims. Other temporal an anomalies involve SCP-004 through 13, especially reappearance of SCP-004 or CAS-1 and SCP-004 CAS-2, exactly blank years after using SCP-004 unknown. Blank has been an assigned to investigate all aspects of these time anomalies. Spectral anomalies include the impossibly large dimensions of the area opened by SCP-0047. Similarly, the 2003 blackout incident suggests there exists an alternate plane of existence within the same space that, that Site-62 occupies. Additional notes. Testing on SCP-004 reveals that 10 and of the keys open SCP-041 on a dimension where laws of physics and topology are significantly different than those of our home dimension. Thus, subjects mean these hostile conditions are torn apart, and the body parts deposited in various locations, only three of which have been verified to be on Earth. Material deposited at, these, at two of these points appear immediately. Material deposited at a third appears exactly blank years into the future. The other seven locations are currently unknown. Current testing focuses on two avenues of research. The first is finding ways to survive SCP-004's hostile topologies. The second that I expand suggests that SCP-0042-13 may open doors other than SCP-0041. Appendix A, Mental Health Effects of 0412. All Class C personnel using SCP-0412 return in a catatonic state, unable to speak. Some may have, have enough energy left to try uh, to cloud their eyes. Of the 16 subjects, only 4 have survived. Only one has regained speech. Following long-term psychotherapy, he was able to tell the psychiatrist that he saw a massive green creature, so large that much of its body extended beyond his field of view. He reported innate fear and sudden recognition as if it were something very deep in his primal fears, and forced implantation of incomprehensible memories. The subject displays acute anterograde and retrograde amnesia. Hey, they found an amnestic! Yay! They could have not killed people. Appendix B. Additional information. Ab number. SCP-0014, date of discovery, September 2nd, 1950. Origin of object. Object was discovered elsewhere in the factory area, in the previously undiscovered earth manager's office. Object appears as a large, unvarnished wooden box. The box may be unlocked by the safe key, SCP-0047, as well as five of the scp 0 of the unsee un unsee uh, of the unsafe keys. See document SCP-0041. Upon unlocking SCP-0014 with SCP-0047, the box automatic opens automatically on hinges. The volume of the space inside is precisely five times greater than the outer dimensions imply. As placed with in order the lid remains open, do not affect the weight or any properties of the box. When the lid is closed and locked, however, all items vanish irretrievably. Personnel locked inside the box are also irretrievable. Although losing personnel in this fashion appears to affect significantly the dreams experienced by that expunged. That was the first SCP.
004, The Twelve Keys and the Rusty Door. It seems like an odd way of going to different dimensions that most humans cannot survive in. Now we're going on to SCP-005, also known as the Skeleton Key. Item Number, SCP-005, Object Class, Safe. SCP-005 poses no immediate risk in any direct sense, even so, its unique fun function requires special measures to be taken to restrict access and manipulation of the object. Approval of at least one level 4 personnel is required for removal of the object from its containment area. Oh yeah, that's probably explained what safe Euclid and Keter at least mean. Safe means that the object will stay in the box if you put it in the box. Euclid means that you can put the object in the box, but may try and possibly sometimes succeed at, at escaping the box in anomalous ways. Keter means you can put it in a box, but it, it will be very hard to keep it in that box. Apollyon means that it's destroying the box in the world. Bongo means that it is the box. There are many other er, er, classes of anomalies in the SCP Foundation, but I think that's enough for now. Description in appearance, SCP-005 resembles an ornate key displaying the characteristics of a typical mass-produced key used in the 1920s. The key was discovered when a civilian used it to infiltrate a high-security facility. SCP-005 seems to have the unique ability to open any and all forms of locks. See Appendix A. Either mechanical or digital with relative ease, the origin of this ability has yet to be determined. Additional notes. SCP-005 may be used as a replacement for the lost security passes, but only under the supervision of at least one Level 4 personnel. SCP-005 may not be used for vending machine repairs, opening lockers, or for any a personnel spare home key. Removal of the object from the compound will result in immediate termination. Appendix A. While SCP-005 has been shown to be effective and removing almost any form of locking device, further experiments have shown that efforts to disguise the purpose or identity of a lock have proven at least somewhat successful in defeating SCP-005's ability. In approximately 50% of cases where a volunteer was not able to identify locking devices as such, SCP-005 was not successful in, the, in deactivating the device. Due to these results, SCP-005 has been typically classified as sentient and further tests are being run to determine its cognitive abilities. However, there are no results that show any traits that prevent it from being able to identify any particular locking device. Only that the aforementioned device has been heavily concealed and disguised. Basically, it's a key to the city of sorts. It can unlock any lock that you know is a lock, but it is entirely reliant on you knowing that the lock is a lock. If you don't know it's a lock, then you can't unlock anything. We're moving on to SCP-006, also known as the Fountain of Use. Good. SCP-006, under direct or orders of the Founder, access is limited to those with Overseer Council uh, clearance. Overseer clearance granted. SCP-006, Special Containment Procedures, 
Whereas the nature of 0 to 6 does not warrant any extensive containment, a certain level of secrecy is necessary regarding the object's existence and properties. For obvious reasons, the following procedures are required are not for personal safety, but to deny or hide knowledge of 0 to 6's effects from the personnel who interact with it. <sighs> All personnel interact with SCP-006 in any physical way are required to wear modified class 6 b and &E suits. Before personnel are allowed to perform procedures, they must be briefed with, with the material SCP-006-B or SCP-006-C. SCP-006-A briefing is a correct one and is restricted to only those with O5 clearance. To ensure personnel are wearing suits properly, they are to be submerged in a pool of water. Any yeah, of a spot at it signify a leak in the suit. Procedures with, with SCP-006 are to be carried out under extreme surveillance. In case of contact with SCP-006, the commander in charge will announce Procedure 006 XI-12, which the person I have been briefed to will believe to mean highly toxic high toxicity is present and must evacuate. Any procedure in which a liquid is acquired from SCP-006 must be approved by three O5 level personnel. The liquid is to be transferred in a quad sealant container and under armed guard. If at any time personnel come into contact with 006 or liquid from 006, they are to be confined and terminated after sufficient studies are done. Due to the nature of SCP-006, the most effective termination method is incineration. For full report, see SCP-006 TER-05. Description SCP-006 is a very small spring located 60 kilometers left of Astrakhan. Foundation Command was aware of its existence since the 19th century, but were unable to secure it until 1991 due to political reasons. On the spot of the East Spring, a chemical factory has been constructed as a disguise, with the majority of laborers under Foundation and or Russian control. Liquid emitted from the East Spring has been chemically identified as simple mineral raw water in 1902, but has the unusual property of health. Ingesting the liquid produces the following properties in human beings. The ability to regenerate DNA, a damage by sufficient duplication, heightened excitement of cellular duplication, vastly improved abilities in the repair of damaged tissue, and a frightening increase in effectiveness of the human immune system. Upon testing the liquid on animal subjects, hostile bacteria and viral agents were destroyed immediately. Many reptile I was in birds were unaffected, while higher pr er, er, primates experienced the same benefits as humans. So essentially, it is quite literally the mythical fountain of youth that a lot of people have been wanting to find. <sighs> well, this has been Haku the Bean with SCP-004, also known as the 12 keys under Rusty Door, SCP-005, the Skeleton Key, and SCP-006, the Fountain of Youth. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe. And if you have any questions for me to answer, which I will need before the end of the week, then please leave them in the comments below. Thank you for watching. I'll see you tomorrow.